Hello and welcome to the Finding Your Voice platform, where we aim to keep everybody across the globe connected in a time of social distancing, self-isolation and world lockdown. Today, my ultra awesome guest is Simon Gould. Now, he was the personal chef to Simon Fuller, who was the creator of the Idol franchise. He's also been former chef to billionaire Oracle CEO, Larry Ellison. In New Zealand, very famous for being a judge on MasterChef New Zealand, and more interestingly, also has been on the documentary, Why Are We Fat and How We Eat. He's also, he's a very busy man, everybody. He is also the co-founder of the Four Wheels of Health program, which I am so keen to find out more about. It's a program that has been designed to fix the core functioning of your body's biochemistry, uh, your metabolism, and it's also about teaching you what to do to improve your health, as opposed to just telling you. Now, I love that approach. Simon, thank you so much for joining with me today, all the way from your home on lockdown. I can only imagine that uh, COVID-19 has hit you pretty hard. Yeah, it has hit me hard and mm. that's life, isn't it? We're, you know, I'm not immune and I don't think anybody is immune to what's going on at the moment. We're all gonna be affected in some way or another. I get, you know, I've got an import company that imports food from Spain and Italy mm -hmm. called Gold's Deli, and we supply restaurants mainly, but also the public. And I tell you, that's not an ideal business to be in no. at the moment. No, and it was really interesting. You know, I, was, I, I was talking to some of the team that worked there, and I have an awesome team. And one of them said to me, you know, I guess it's inevitable that... Um, will probably be made redundant. And my reaction was to that is no way. You know, we have to think now what mm. we're going to come out of this and how we're going to box. We have to yeah. diversify. You know, mm. being in the business of importing food from Spain and Italy and supplying restaurants, it ain't going to work. You know, yeah. we potentially are over, bust, I come and take my house, everybody loses mm. their job. And I said to her, I said, look, you know, I don't care whether we make a cent. We've just got to survive. We've got to keep these people that have worked for me for years still in a job with longevity and some confidence. And now is the time that we've got to have our thinking cap on. What are we going to do? So I'm not rolling over for COVID-19. And I don't believe anybody in New Zealand is. Mm -hmm. No, and, and that's exactly the kind of attitude that's going to get everybody through. You know, you, you can choose to be a victim and just be like, this is all happening to me and this is awful and we're going to go bust, we're all going to lose our jobs, we're going to, you know, our houses are going to get taken from us. Or we can be like, okay, how do we make something out of this situation? How do we take a really challenging, life-threatening uh, situation and how do we turn it around and how do we grow from it and how, do, you know, what, can, what do we stand to gain from it? Now, I know that you've been in a particularly challenging situation when it's come to your health. Um, and I, I love the story. And if you feel open to it, I'd, I'd love to just kind of just move into that a little bit and then to kind of come back to what that means for everybody who is in lockdown right now. Um, you had a health scare not too long ago that has totally changed your life, much like COVID is potentially changing people's lives right now. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think six years ago, I was a lot bigger than what I am now. I mean, if you look at some of these cookbox, you know, there's a little bit of a difference. You know, I've got a whole stack of these wow. cookbooks that I've put out. And, you know, I, I'm not really particularly proud of the state that I got into. And, you know, this is my latest cookbook. And if you look at the difference um, from the Amazing. previous ones, I, I you know, I, I got what my mum warned me I'd probably get, which is, Simon, you're overweight, you've carried it around for a long time, diabetes runs in the family, and you're running the risk of getting diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I completely ignored that. And you know, since I left school, I really didn't do much exercise, and I just progressively put on weight. Mm -hmm. Because not necessarily of what I was eating, but when I was eating, you know, it was always late at night. You know, I was married to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I lived in restaurants for, oh, 
you know, years and years and years yeah. since basically I was 16. Mm. And, you know, when I was 22 was when I opened my first restaurant. And I, I lived there, like literally I, the first three years of that restaurant, I didn't have a day off. We were closed Sunday, but, you know, I was there all the time. Mm. But always eating at like one o'clock in the morning just right. before I'd go to bed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting up late, not getting great sleep. And all those things culminated in a, in a fat time. And it's a non-PC word, isn't it? But, you know, I was a beast. And interestingly enough, you know, we live in the country, New Zealand, that is the second most obese country in the world. We have the mm -hmm. second most obese children in the world. So what have we been like as parents, right, to get yeah, our kids sense. to that state? Yeah. And I hear everybody out there thinking, Oh, South Auckland. Well, you can bag that up and shove that where it hurts because, you know, I'm telling you, it's the whole of New Zealand. It's not mm -hmm. just South Auckland. We're the second most obese country in the world, and I was one of them. Yeah. And I ignored it. I mean, you know, I went for a uh, insurance company blood test for, to get some health insurance, and they rang me and said, we think you should go and see your doctor. You've got elevated um, glucose levels. So I went along to my doctor and he said, yep, sure enough, I've got some bad news for you. You're a type two diabetic and your blood glucose levels are out of control. Oh, yeah, that would be I've got some tablets for you. So he gave me some medication, mm -hmm. which I started taking. And I was quite embarrassed by the fact that I had this type two diabetes. I didn't want to tell anybody. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the secret disease that I had that I didn't want to share with people. and mm -hmm. You know, so I only told my close family and that was it. And I pretty much ignored it because they gave me these tablets every time I go to the doctor, they'd say, you need to lose weight. And I'm like, yeah, that's easy. Which it's not, right? There's a lot of people that will identify mm -hmm. with me on that. It's hard to lose weight. So this went on for years. You know, I filmed MasterChef. Nobody knew. I was taste, taste food, eat food, eat lunch, eat dinner, eating at wrong times. Then I would go to work and every spare moment that I had. Until um, six years ago, I changed doctors. And I decided I would go to a doctor called uh, Dr. Tom Do. So I went all through my school schooling way. And he's a very, very clever doctor. He's a lawyer, he's an accountant, and he's a doctor. It's, you know, there's not many people with all That's those degrees. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. So I thought, well, I should support my mate, right? So the very first appointment that I made, his nurse rang back and said he'd like you to come just before lunch. I thought, perfect, we'll be going out for lunch. That sounds good. And uh, I turned up and I sat down and he read me the riot act. He was like, Simon, do you actually want to... At this stage, I had a, a little girl who was about seven months old. And he said, do you want to walk down the aisle with your daughter? Because of the way you're going, you won't. You're probably at some stage going to get a toe chopped off. Then probably your foot, maybe even your legs from your oh. knees. You will probably go blind. You will probably go to hospital and be on dialysis. You are going to die of a diabetes-related problem because you are yeah. this close to going on insulin. You're on the maximum drugs for type 2 diabetes. You need to pull your finger out. Well, I sat there and thought, well, I guess lunch is off. <laughs> Did you lose your appetite for quite a while after that? <laughs> well, I walked out of there and I was, I, I was pretty shell-shocked. And mm. I was like, you know, I went home and I'm like, oh, boy, you know, like, oh, you know, I had, had the wind kicked out of me. Mm. So I got onto the computer and I typed into Mr. Google, reverse diabetes. I thought there's got to be a, an easier solution mm. here. And I found this place in Nevada that said that they could help people reverse their diabetes. And so then I started Google searching some more to find out about this place. And I found the YouTube clips of people there and it just really looked like a bunch of hippies hanging out and smoking drugs and you know doing yoga. Not that there's anything wrong with yoga. Anyway, well, I certainly wasn't into yoga back then. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is not the place for me to go. So I continued looking and I found a place in Somerset in the UK. And then I found some YouTube clips of people 
that were sort of similar to me that had been there and mm -hmm. managed to come off all their drugs and actually reverse their diabetes. So I rang them and said, you know, I'm in New Zealand, I'm considering coming. This was a big step for me. I'd never taken, you know, done anything like this before. It was going to be expensive. And they said, we don't do it anymore. And I said, why? And they said, because you need to have a nurse on, come and see you three times a week. We need to have a doctor on standby uh, because we're going to, you know, be messing with your drugs. They specialized in detoxing. Mm -hmm. So people that were athletes went there, people that were dancers, uh, writers. It was sort of the beautiful people almost that were in tip-top condition that went there. Anyway, they said they'd think about it because I said, well, I'd be prepared to pay for that. And fortunately, I was in a position back then that I could I could spend that sort of money. It was a you know it was an expensive deal to do to fly to the UK just alone. And then they came back to me and said, "Yes, we will see you. <coughs> Excuse me, but we will need you for perhaps four to eight weeks." Wow, that's a long commitment. Best case scenario. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, it's got a tick on my throat. Um, mm. Best case scenario, four weeks. Worst case scenario, eight weeks. And I'd never taken four weeks, let alone eight weeks off in my life to do mm -hmm. something like this. So I gave it some thought and decided, yes, that was what I was going to do and I was going to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, um, off I went. And I, the big night out with some friends in London, <laughs> like the last supper. Yeah. And I turned up at this place and they sat me down and they told me how it was going to roll. And it was like checking into a funny farm, really, with a lot of really beautiful people there. And then this sort of fat cook that turns up. <laughs> and they said to me, OK, you'll have a personal trainer that you'll be meeting with every day and doing the work out with. You will be... Um, doing yoga, it's like, yeah, right. You'll be doing meditation, I was like, mm -hmm. you reckon? <laughs> and uh, every night you'll be coming to a meeting where we'll be educating you on all sorts of aspects of health, from sleep to all, all these different things. Well, I was here now, right? I was there and I thought, yeah. well, I'm gonna go. I'm, this, I'm here, I've gotta give it everything. And, you know, I was very conscious that I, I've got this beautiful little girl and you know I actually do want to be around for her and that is my fight for life full stop is for her and I remember the first day I went to the the gym with this guy who was like you know the finest specimen you could ever see and he, he was like got me on this running machine I lasted about two minutes and you know I, I was not in good shape and, you know, I went to the first yoga class. I couldn't touch my toes. I was stood down the back. The view was fantastic. So I thought this was okay. And, uh, you know, I carried on and I went every day. I started meditation. I remember in the very first meditation, they were, I couldn't even lie on the floor without my back hurting. Mm. And, you know, they were, <clears throat> imagine you're floating. And everyone's like, yeah, this, you know, they reckon they yeah. were. This is a crock of shit. <laughs> anyway, you know, the, the weeks went on and the weight started coming off. I ate only raw food and juices. Um, I did, you know, I, I, was, I fully committed to it. And, you know, believe it or not, after four weeks, I, I did imagine I was floating with the meditation. I'm a huge fan of meditation, a particularly mm. guided meditation. Um, yoga I haven't carried on with but I totally get it I rate it by the end of it I could you know I could put my hands flat on the floor without any difficulty at all I learned a lot of things now that I just do with yoga that I might just go I, I need a stretch or but I know how to do it now and I progressively came off the medication and I walked out of there taking no diabetes drugs and that was, you know, I get quite emotional when I talk about it 
and I guess I'm on a camera right now, so it's a bit easier not to be quite so emotional. You but can cry. You can cry if you want some. Believe, believe me, I did. You know, <laughs> when I could run 20 minutes on a running machine, yes. and this guy's going, "You're doing it for your daughter. Come on, come on." The mm -hmm. tears come. I tell you. Mm -hmm. The, the, the points that I've taken, you know, is that you, you, you took the time to actually get out of your routine, okay? And we can relate this to, to people who are shoving their face full of chips and lollies and cake and all feel, you know, feel good things right now. You took the time to step outside of your routine, which is what we're doing now. You fully committed to the, the process to get yourself back up and running with your, with your health. Um, you got off your medication, but obviously following um, your medical professional's advice, you didn't just stop your medication, but you were doing a lot of other things to really support good positive health. You um, meditated, which is a lot about quieting your mind, which you know we've been so busy in life up until this point now, where now suddenly we don't have as much, we've got different things that we're thinking about now, but it's not all about go, 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 you know? Um, and, the, and having the reason in your mind you know, the, the why beneath your why, the why is it that I am choosing to take this path, which is feeling really horrible and awful right now. Um, eat, I'm eating only raw food and juices, you know, and, and what am I doing? But it was that reason that, that guide you, guided you through all of that, that hard time. And I think what I'm hearing is, is that for the people who are at home now, wherever they are in the world, that if they have a reason to do something, you know, if there's a possibility of a, a health gain or being able to get off medication or to be able to change eating habits or whatever, then this is potentially uh, something that you can actually offer. And that's through your Four Wheels of Health program. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so true. I mean, I, I did this big change and I learned about, you know, fats, I learned about superfoods, I learned about um, nutrition in a different way and what what's actually happened if you go back 40 years and look at any TV clips in New Zealand there weren't all these obese people around mm. and it's the food has changed that is available and you know there weren't supermarkets back then like there are today where there's just sugar everywhere and most of the food is proce highly processed and mm. refined and that's been uh, killing the good gut bacteria in our gut so we just feel like eating that stuff we you know those hunger pains are the little gut bacteria in us going feed me some sugar feed me some sugar because the, the yeah. bad gut back sorry that's the bad gut bacteria in there mm -hmm. and they're trying to multiply in, in your gut imagine your gut is like a rainforest right mm -hmm. it needs all these things to survive and it's so important that we look after those good gut bacteria. But what we know is that the bad gut bacteria, bad gut bacteria love refined and processed foods and sugar. And mm. that's how they thrive. Mm. So if you imagine that 90% of our body is actually gut bacteria, if we cremated ourselves right now and put ourselves in a box, 90% of that box is actually gut bacteria. It's the most wow. important thing in our body. Mm. But the interesting thing is, is that our gut makes 90% of our serotonin. So that's our happy hormone. Mm. That's, you know, how we feel daily and how good we feel, or how, how motivated we are. And that's why right now with COVID-19, COVID yeah. you know, I see, you know, I, I, I largely make my income out of public speaking. 100% mm. of that is gone for the year. I have a yeah. business that supplies restaurants. That is gone. It is not going to exist. You know, I have a, a supermarket company that I've been involved, you know, a brand that I've been involved for eight years, which I made one cent out of. Interestingly enough, right now, it's going quite well for the very first time. But because yeah. my gut bacteria is good and I'm making lots of good serotonin and I'm not down in the dumps, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm ready for this. You know, mm -hmm. if anything where I've done over the last six years is prepared me to deal with this situation right now and mm -hmm. fight it, not give up, yeah. rally my troops. I am so lucky. I have people that have worked for me for years and years and years mm -hmm. that stick by with me. And I'm not going to let this thing beat us all. We're going to survive. 
But I guess, you know, after I did that big health transformation and then I went off and studied this even more and I changed the way that I live on a daily day, day-to-day basis without eating twigs and berries. This is not a twigs and berries diet. It's not a diet. It's mm-hmm. about sleep. It's about improving sleep. If we get eight hours sleep every day, Alzheimer's and all dementia and all those things don't happen, right? It helps prevent that. It gives us energy. Sleep helps you lose weight. It's about 25% of losing weight is about having good sleep. And 25% of nutrition is about having you know, good, good, sorry, 25% of sleep is about what you eat that affects how you sleep and vice versa. Mm. So, you know, sleep, gut bacteria, when you eat, the time you eat, so your body can actually fast. You don't want to be eating just progressively through the day and grazing, get up, have breakfast, then there's a snack, then there's lunch, then there's afternoon tea, and then there's dinner. We've got a fridge and freezer in our body. Now, it's just like the fridge and freezer in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. We put things in the freezer when we've got too much of it. Yeah. But during the day, we can use all the things, burn that energy that's in the fridge, Mm -hmm. and we can use it up. But we never get to what's in the freezer. And if you imagine the freezer in our body is the fat that we see on us. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is eat in a window so that we have more time where we're fasting during the day. So let's say we have our first meal at 10 o'clock and we have our last meal at six o'clock at night. You've got 16 hours that you're fasting. So we can actually delve into that freezer, grab what's in there out and it's fat, convert the fat into energy, into fuel, right? Our body does that. And then we can burn it up and it disappears and we get slimmer. So it's all those things. So I ended up, you know, doing this uh, documentary called Why Are We Fat? We went around the world meeting the world's experts in health, whether mm. it be the world's expert in sugar, gut bacteria, sleep. Uh, we went to universities and met with research scientists. We saw rats being tested on different diets. Really interesting with the rats, right? Most beautiful looking rats, one group of them. They had two groups of rats. One group where they fed them whole foods the other group all highly processed and refined foods Mm -hmm. now they studied to see what the cancer rates were oh okay the cancer rates in the guys that ate whole foods was virtually zero and the other guys were all dying of cancer and the ones who are having whole foods they look like a, a pet rat they look good not that I want to pick them up, but yeah. The <laughs> other ones look, look pretty unhealthy. They just, you could tell the difference. Now, you go to a place like Icarus in Greece, where, you know, they live to be a lot older than most people around the world. Yeah. Their cancer rates are 30% less than what they are in New Zealand. Their heart disease is 50% less. Their diabetes rate is one ninth of what it is in New Zealand. Why? Amazing. Because they're eating whole foods. And they're not living on processed and refined foods. Mm. And I'm just so passionate about this. So having learned all this, done these documentaries, met these world's experts, I thought, mm. how can I help people? Can I help other Kiwis mm. lose some weight? So I teamed up with this guy called Sean Robertson, who is a young nutritionist who thinks, outside of the box mm-hmm. you can deliver it in a way that you understand you know you go to a nutritionist they say oh yeah palm full of this and that on the plate and they put yep. you on a diet they give you the food to go off and eat it's a load of bullshit we mm-hmm. need to focus on sleep first that affects us losing weight it helps us losing weight how much water do we drink and by what time in the day we put measures in for that we don't tell people what to eat we tell people what they shouldn't eat and we help them with their nutrition, how to read labels and what foods are better than other foods. We just change the way they live. We get them to look after their gut bacteria. They get them to eat in windows and it's called Four Wheels of Health now. So we did the first course like two and a half years ago and it worked. Mm. People lose weight. Now, two years later, these people have kept the weight off. I mean, 
if you go to our website, you'll see people sing the praises of what we do because it's a way of life. It's not a diet. We've seen people do Jenny Craig. We've seen people do all these other fad diets and they lose weight for sure. But we all, we all see them put the weight back on, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to change our way of life. And it actually is a beautiful thing. You have more energy. You feel like living life more. It's just a great thing. So we call it four wheels of health. You can't drive your car to work. You can't drive it anywhere at the moment. But you know, <laughs> without, without four wheels, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't drive our car without putting fuel in there. Mm -hmm. And when we sleep, right, at night, we're actually essentially driving to the gas station and plugging the Bowser into our brain and yeah. filling it up while we sleep. There's a little gas tank up here and it fills it up with melatonin. But if we break our sleep in the night, you wake up in the night, oh, I wonder how much more sleep I've got left to go. Or look at my iPhone or clock. You do that mental calculation. From mm -hmm. that moment on, the Bowser stops putting melatonin in. So that you probably wake up in the morning, you've got half a tank three quarters of a tank or a quarter of a tank depending on how you've slept and then that's your energy for the day that's when you run out of steam at the end of the day god i don't want to talk to anybody else i'll just get yeah. takeaways on the way home or actually i'll just cook pasta because it's easy and mm -hmm. our body just converts all the pasta into sugar which goes straight to our freezer which is what we look like right our fat so yeah. you know four wheels of health we're a car right our body is a car but the thing is, with our car, we can take it and we can trade it in and we can get a new one. Mm -hmm. We can't with our bodies. Okay. We can't trade our bodies in. We get one body to mm -hmm. live in and what the four wheels health does, and it doesn't matter how old you are when you start, mm -hmm. it helps and you feel better. And I'll tell you what, it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. You know, mm -hmm. I like putting a smile on people's face. You know, cooking food and seeing people love it is just the most beautiful thing in the world until Four Wheels of Health came along. When I meet people or I, you know, that have done the course and they're just giving me the biggest hug in the world and they're crying and they're, you've changed my life. I'm a different person. I'm off medication. I've got rid of my eczema i've had my hairs stop falling out my skin's improved i've got energy and the husband pipes up and says i'm getting shagged again you know i mean it's a whole new world for them four wheels yeah. of health and it's the most rewarding thing that i've ever done and i love it and i just wish i could do it full time it's so so rewarding well you know I coffee by the way and there's no milk in here well, exactly, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that throughout the, the programs that you run, you are providing a lot of education for people, which is actually going to end up helping people to feel empowered, to be able to make their own decisions based off their particular body needs, right? There's a, there's a lot of um, programs out there which are like, you know, lose 10 kgs in 10 days and blah, blah, blah. And they, they tell you exactly what to eat, when to eat and how to exercise and everything. And by the time you've lost all this weight at the end of your 10 days or 10 weeks or whatever it is, you are not equipped with the understanding of what it is that you have to do. So as soon as they pull the plug, because you've now done your 10 days or your 10 weeks, you don't have that support. And from what I understand is that if somebody was to join in with the Four Wheels of Health program, they are getting constant support from you and from Sean and from the rest of the Four Wheels of Health community so that if they've got any questions or if they feel like they need a lifeline or um, if they're going, hey, can I eat? is this a good thing to, to be eating right now? Then they are part of this amazing um, connecting community and engaging community that helps to hold their hand through future courses because I'm, I'm sure people would come back and do another course, wouldn't they? Can they? Yeah, they do. Some, some do, some do, absolutely. The interesting thing is with the Four Wheels of Health is the very first program we ran on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we met on a Friday every week. And it wasn't called Four Wheels when we first started, but we, you know, we met these guys and they'd all be sitting there. Nobody would want to ask a question because there's all these other people and they're like, oh, I don't know whether, you know, I don't want to yeah. say that in front of everybody. So the, court, the meeting would finish and then they'd all come up individually and ask their questions. And we're only meeting them once a week. And we had fantastic results. It was an eight week course. 
and we had an average of, I think, 13 to 20 kilo weight loss of people in wow. that eight weeks. It was pretty outstanding. And then we thought, you know, we need to get to more people, but we need to put them in a platform where they can ask questions and nobody's sitting there judging them because the most stupid question is often the best question. Mm -hmm. So we put it onto Facebook. So it's a private Facebook page that people sign up and then we put them on the Facebook page. And the only real commitment that they really have to do, and they have to think about this before they start, is can they watch a, a 30 minute, 30, anywhere from 25 to 40 minute video most days? And it's either myself or Sean. And we break it up into weeks. The first week is solely sleep. The second week is solely time restricted feeding, all about when to eat and fasting. And we teach people the why. So that at the end of the course, they're their own nutritionist. Mm. And then the third week is gut health. It's all about how we fix our gut health and why. And the last week is all about nutrition. And the results are incredible. It's four weeks, it's on Facebook. And you can ask any question. You've got a nutritionist there 24 seven to come back and answer your question. If you had to pay for those meetings, to go mm. and meet a nutrition, the cost would be just mm. incredible. Yeah, it's really so nice. it's it's a pretty cool thing. But you know, I guess if anybody's got this far in this video, they're the sort of person that can hack this course. Because mm. you know, That's we know with all these kind of videos, if you look at retention, there's a certain group of people that are interested in the subject, and they if they get this far, then you are the sort of people that would love the four wheels way of life. You would love the community and the community can't be, you know, spoken highly enough about. You've got all these people on this community that have done previous courses that like to come back and do it again. And they're there helping you. They're holding your hand as well as Sean and myself. We are a family and it is a community. And after you finish your four weeks, you go to the graduates page which you know about, Laura, mm -hmm. from doing some health coaching on there. Mm -hmm. And that's another, you know, and that costs nothing after you've mm -hmm. done the course. So that's free. And then there's all these people on there that have done the course. And we have meetups around New Zealand. I don't know how long it'll be before we do another one. Yeah. But it is just such a great thing. And right now, with the COVID-19 thing, we've got a two-for-one. So if you buy one course, you get, a, you get a second person on for free. And doing it with somebody you know is mm -hmm. so good because you spur one another on and you're like, oh, did you do that? And did you watch that part of the video? And you know, just got somebody with you. Plus, there's all the community in there on the Facebook page. Yeah. And so if anybody was interested in Simon, um, you know, assuming that they've gotten this far in the video, like you said, if anybody yeah. was interested, um, is the best way to go through um, your fourwheelsofhealth.com website or they can contact you on the um, Facebook page at Four Wheels of Health? What would be your... Either or. So there's a Four Wheels of Health Facebook page, uh, which is for the public, for anybody. And then if they sign up for the course, then we put them on the the that particular course mm. facebook page and the next course starts on the 18th of april so now is the time to get in and what a perfect time while we're at home mm. you know it is all food from the supermarket we do suggest a couple of different things which you can buy online mm. um but it, you know now is the time imagine coming out of this lockdown or isolation as we're supposed to call it Mm. and you've lost a whole bunch of weight and you're healthy and you turn up at work and everybody goes, what have you done? Exactly. And the most expensive thing about doing four wheels of health is you've got to buy new clothes because the clothes you've got won't fit. You know, and, and we're going to be so used to wearing our old clothes day in and day out that it's going to be a perfect opportunity at the end to go and get yourselves a new wardrobe, right? It's, we're going to be, we're going to come out of COVID and we're just going to be like, you know what, I just need to go to the shop. I need to do a bit of retail and oh my gosh, I'm down a couple of sizes in my clothes. That's going to be amazing. And um, do you want to talk about the the cost that people are, are looking to invest in themselves? Yeah, it's $400, $400 for a course and we... For the COVID-19 period, we're offering, you get two for one. So it's essentially $200 each. 200. Which, 200 you know, bucks. For four weeks, yeah. and it's life-changing stuff. And if you go, well, actually, as go to the website and read the testimonials and see mm. what people say after they've done this course. But, you know, 
four, even if you pay $400, right, and you go, well, I've just sorted the rest of my life out where I might not have okay. Alzheimer's and, you know, I might be around a few more years, I think it's a pretty good value for money if you split it out into per day what it yeah. really costs you because it does change your life. Mm. You do need family buy-in. You need yeah. to sometimes sit them down and go because they don't get it, right? They still want to have their ice cream and their highly processed crap. And you've got to sit down, I'm doing this for me. Mm. Now is the perfect time. I need you, who I love, to support me and be supportive of this because it's going to yeah. change my life. I'm going to be a better mum, better dad, a better grandfather, grandparent, brother, sister. You know, and you people, when you go back to work, will be like, holy smoke, what have you done? Mm. And, you know... I, I just love doing it and it, it, it works and if people read the testimonials or see what people say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love the, the, um, the whole kind of future projection of going back to work, which is really positive and exactly where our mind should be and that we are going to emerge out of this. But what if we came out of this cocoon that we're in and we were half the person that we were when we went in compared to a bunch of other people <clears throat> who are sitting on the couch all day, feeling sorry for themselves, mm -hmm. who are thinking that, you know, everything is just really, really bad for them right now and are baking and uh, buying junk food and are um, almost sabotaging their own health in a time when we're really supposed to be keeping our health up and our immunity up, um, kind of doing the opposite thing. Imagine if we were to step up, sign up for your program and to take control of our external situation and our internal situation and emerge out of this so much better and healthier for it. I All think the chocolates and biscuits and those things that you just referred to that, you know, apparently sales of those types of things have gone through the roof mm. is just sabotaging their gut bacteria. And you get that instant gratification and you're feeding all those gut bacteria there, they're going to go, yes, I can multiply them. This is really good, but I'm going to make you feel depressed. I'm going yeah. to make you feel like crap. I'm going to put weight on you. And then, you know, down the track, they go, because there's so many, and they go, gurgle, gurgle. And those hunger pains come back. That's exactly what they are. The bad gut yeah. bacteria say, give me some more, give me some more. You know? Now is the time to actually yeah. try and switch away from those things. Mm -hmm. But in four wheels and help explain what it's really doing and get you to think about why you are going to cut those things out. You can mm -hmm. still have treats, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a twigs and berries diet. We have to have treats. We have to have things that we love. Yeah. But, you know, we need to know when we're cheating, what percentage of our meals are a little bit of a cheat. We, we know if we get people to do 100% what we say, and that would be cut out those sweet treats, mm -hmm. until we get people to what we call maintenance weight. Yeah. Once we get to maintenance, they can introduce those things back in, but they now know what they're doing. They're, they'll feel it in their body as they do it. But if we get people just to do 85% of what we tell them, we still know we get amazing results. So, you know, you can do it. We don't tell people to go running every day and doing squats. It's not an exercise program. We absolutely encourage exercise. And, we, yeah. you know, we want people to get 30 minutes of sunlight for that vitamin D a day and just to walk to start off with. And, you know, imagine, you know, years of, everybody says, how much weight have you lost? Well, it's 20 plus kilos, right, that I've lost mm. and kept on. Now, if I pick up a 20 kilo bag of potatoes and carry it around, I don't feel like going for a long walk. No. But now, you know, I feel like doing some of this other stuff because I've lost a lot of weight and mm. everybody else can do it. And sometimes I put some weight on. Sometimes I'm naughty. I love ice cream. Love it. Mm. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Can't live without ice cream, right? <laughs> but, you know, if I put a bit of weight on over Christmas or whatever, I have the tools up here now to mm. quickly you know, get that weight off again if it's two or three kilos that go on. And the cool thing about running the four wheels of health, I can actually almost try and put a little bit of weight on. So I'm ready when we start on the next one, which is the 18th of April, you go with, go on the journey with them. And it is a yeah. journey. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's changed my life and being able to help people change their lives for the better is, is pretty amazing. 
Well, you know, what, what an inspiring person you are, Simon. I mean, you've, you're, you're walking the talk, you know, and, and what could be possibly more authentic than that than somebody who has got photographic evidence on the books that you've been holding up to us looking at you now and just going, wow, you know, and, and it's not a hard process, you know, it's, it's something that you are holding hands through, you're providing education on, you've got the support going, you know, you're not saying you will never be able to eat ice cream again, you know, it's, it's an empowering time for, for people to go through and to really take control of, of their health. Do you have a key take home message for everybody who's watching before we finish up? I never thought I would ever be a person that people would say, wow, you're looking great and be honest about it. Mm. You know, I was a tubby guy pretty much since I left school for years and years. And to suddenly now have people go, wow, you look amazing. You know, and it's like, I never thought I'd have that. You know, and I could still lose a little bit more weight and I, I will do, but it, it has, has changed my life and I feel better about myself. And the, the one thing that everybody should take away from what I'm saying is remember, we need to be kind to everybody, but mm -hmm. even more so, we need to be kind to our own body. We get one body to live in. We need to look after it. We need to love it and make it thrive. And then you'll be the kindest person in the world because you will feel so bloody mm -hmm. good. I love that's, that. That's what I think. One body to live in. Let's look after it. I, I love that. Um, Simon, anybody who wants to get hold of you, they go, uh, they type in the number four and then wheelsofhealth.com or they can jump in on your Facebook page, which is at the number four wheels of health. Um, your deli, are we um, sending anybody your way? Are you, I saw that you're- That'd be cool because right now I need that. Yeah. Anybody wants to help me out there. So we're an essential service because we supply the supermarkets. We have a contactless pickup at Spartan Road in Takanini in Auckland, or mm -hmm. you can go on to um, goldsdeli.co.nz and you can order online and I have a lot of goodies on there. The other thing I've been doing normally around three o'clock not every day, but most days is a live video cooking and giving people tips. What it, what's, you know, yesterday I did a thing on lemons, the day before on guavas, tomorrow I'm gonna do a, a parmesan pasta dish. So this is definitely a cheap dish. Once a week mm -hmm. we're allowed a little cheat. Yeah. And, you know, so just to help Kiwis, and that's on my Facebook page. And also um, we put some videos up on great Kiwi cooks. We've only just started it for COVID-19 yeah. and uh, it's getting some traction. People are liking it. They're very amateurish. And just I'm filming it with a, one hand on the iPhone and one hand trying to cook. Nice. And we've got other chefs coming on board from around New Zealand who are going to make videos and help Kiwis cook at home. Because that's what we've got to do, people, is we've got to do more cooking ourselves mm -hmm. instead of buying all this packet of stuff that is so processed. Yeah. I love that. Um, Simon Galt, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really appreciate everything that you've shared with us, your story, your journey, um, and all the amazing things that you're doing for people now. Go and check out Four Wheels of Health. It is well worth the investment in yourself. Really highly recommend it. And Simon, you can see an incredibly approachable guy. So find out about it. Come and join up and we'll see you in April 18th. More yep. importantly, thanks to you, Laura. I think what you're doing for Kiwis with this YouTube channel is really great. It helps people and, you know, you need a big virtual hug uh, I'll take one. for doing it because oh, that is fantastic. And we all need support. It doesn't matter who we are. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're stumping up and doing it. So well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll speak again soon. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao. Bye.